some of those stickers and things, um, but it's also the totality of that crime scene, the inside as well, that they will look at now at FBI headquarters. This is not Quantico. What is it in Miramar and what are they capable of? Well, there's no doubt in my mind that the FBI headquarters in uh, Miramar has the equipment they need in order to collect DNA, in order to get uh, even microscopic evidence. And keep in mind that as they go through that van uh, and they start uh, ana uh, uh, analyzing fingerprints and other evidence, the mm -hmm. question is, is somebody else's fingerprints in there. Right. You see, so this is why it's important to take those pictures and to secure that crime scene. That, that, that's what I was going to ask. Is that question number one? I mean, is that the top priority as you come in? Is there somebody else out there? Well, exactly right. Uh, uh, and they're probably going to do a lot more, as was reported earlier by your reporter. I think it was Catherine on the phones. Yeah. Who was this person calling? At what time were they calling? That doesn't mean the person they were calling is involved. But a lot of these guys, you know, they mm. start making phone calls to their friends saying, look what I'm going to do. Watch TV. Because mm. we're dealing with someone very unstable. Or, or in this sense, since he was already on their radar and obviously was driving around in something that was so decorated you could pick it out probably in the dark, he may have been uh, you know, having conversations more about what are you seeing? I mean, sometimes we'll see that with criminals too. You know, what are you seeing on the outside? How worried should I be? Uh, Dagan, I know that you've been keeping close hide on social media and other aspects of this. Right. Uh, you have to be careful about what you read and see on social media. Right. But the, the pictures that we are seeing in terms of when the tarp flew off the van, right. we could all see the conspiracy stickers and information that's that covered in the van. But the speed with which they apprehended the suspect is really astonishing. Yes. To quote Catherine Herridge, what she's been saying earlier, the wealth of forensic evidence that they had because of these 12 devices, some of which were not even sent down to Quantico in Virginia because they were unstable and detonated before they were sent. But in terms of, they had already reached out to retailers, locating where the pipes had come from, where the explosive powder, the actual manila envelopes that the um, devices were sent in to the, the, all of these individuals. And then the fact is this man had a lengthy arrest record based on um, our reporting and, and other reports out there. Yeah. Not just in recent history, but according to the New York Times, going back to 1991 mm -hmm. is how far back his arrest record was. Well, and you know, Dagan, as you look at that, that the one that kind of um, burst, if you will, for a Fox affiliate SVN down in Florida was that 2002 arrest because it was specific to the topic of what we're looking for and looking right. at now, and that was a bomb threat. Right. So we know that he was on the radar, but specific to what we were seeing and charges that that may be pending against him at this point, uh, there was that history. And, and driving around in a vehicle parked in a, a, a shopping center where it where he, near he was apprehended for days and days that drew attention right. to you. That's that what boggles was, my it mind. It was so conspicuous that just alone people would stop and look in the van, according to some of the reports out there. And, and I was really he pleased to see the president and hear the president talk about the fact that there is absolutely no place in our country for this kind of thing and that we need to come together as a country because we've really seen too much of this in the country. Now you have uh, prominent leaders on the left receiving uh, possibly explosive packages. You have Republicans being you know, gunned down at a baseball event uh, in the name of health care. We've had Republicans during the Kavanaugh hearing having to have protection uh, because of the death threats against them because we cannot live in a country where if you're serving in a position of leadership, this is what you're on the receiving end of. So I think this is where the conversation needs to stay as the country from the president uh, to politicians on down. And to Lisa's point, if I may, mm -hmm. the best of America we saw, the best of law enforcement, and the president of the United States set that tone, to your point, Lisa, perfectly. We all came together. No matter what our political ideology is or political party is, Americans came together and they got the culprit. You, I wonder you know, if that'll last. What, one yes. thing that the president said, too, just in the context of that, was that let the world see us uh -huh. together as American citizens. Because when this happens, we all know our hearts stopped when we saw people spilling out of Time Warner in evacuation mode, the CNN headquarters uh, a couple of days ago, onto the streets of Manhattan, 58th Street, and uh, Columbus Circle there. It, it's jarring. It's jarring. And the whole world watches us in this metro 
recoil and be, you know, resilient. And they, they watch us go through these. But then these devices started showing up in other parts, all the way to the other coast. And so it is the world watching. It's very interesting that he would. It reminds it me of Ronald Reagan once yeah. said, we bounce back because we're Americans. Steve, can I ask you to look at the screen real quick? And maybe you can look and describe some of the things that you're seeing here. I mean, it, it looks like possibly of someone taking pictures, but they're coming out. We get a closer look to kind of see how they are approaching this vehicle. We had thought that they were going to back it into a closed area so we wouldn't be able to watch it. But can you see any of the things that are going on over there? Yeah, they're uh, obviously they are taking pictures, but they're going to look at the undercarriage. They're going to be looking to make sure that as they move that vehicle, they don't touch even the outer parts of that vehicle. There may be fingerprints on the doors, on the yeah. hoods, on the trunk. So they're just being very, very careful. Would they already know that there's no explosive devices or it isn't oh, I'm sure in any they way do. at this yeah. point? Why yeah. They, they wouldn't it? have pulled it yeah, through They wouldn't have had that added. I'm sure they had dogs. Uh, they had some uh, uh, forensic teams go in there to make sure there's no explosive devices. I mean, they couldn't even keep the tarp on. So I think that if they thought yeah. that there yeah. was some device well, under there, yeah. that would be but, even more it's a lot, a lot of Can I ask you another detail that we heard earlier today? They were talking about the print that was on the note that went along around the outside of the packages and the block printing and saying that within that block printing there are actually numbers that are hidden in there in that specific kind of print so that they can do some sort of tracing back to what type of printer or what printer it was. Have you, do you know about that? Uh, I, I do know that there are certain printing outfits that do have uh, hidden numbers, all right? Yeah. And, and uh, it's actually used to, uh, if there's a product recall, all right? They're oh, like product recall numbers. Hmm. So they were able to capture that, and uh, they were probably able to lead back to where, who printed this paper, and who, what retail outfits do they sell this paper to? Right. So that's how efficient they were. Interesting. Yeah. You know, okay, so as Melissa had pointed out, they at one point were backing this vehicle into that location, uh, and then they, they pulled it back out. We can't see as much of that vehicle as we had been able to on the freeway because the wind isn't helping well, us out in terms of blowing and, back that tarp. And, and, but what else do you... Well, observe? picture a hospital room, right? Clean, clean as a whistle, no germs. That's where that vehicle's going. That's going into a very clean, secure environment where that there's going to be no way that any evidence is going to be contaminated. Uh, and that is very, very important. Well, What's happening? The, I was just going to say, given the condition of this van, based on what we've been, when the tarp flew back, you could see what was on the dashboard of it. Oh, right. It, in terms of the time it will take to process yes. this, this vehicle, it's going, to, it. it's going to take quite a bit of time for law enforcement to take care of that. So, Steve, let's, if we can, um, and of course, we'll keep this on the screen because we didn't anticipate we'd see this much of the first work of investigation here, but we're grateful to see them begin this. I want to concentrate, though, on the human element and all of this, that somebody had been driving around in that van, and uh, we think that that person has been arrested and, and taken into custody because this was taken off his premises, and that's what we've been told. What's happening with that suspect right now? Criminal psychological profilers will be interviewing him as well as the uh, uh, criminal element investigators. They want to, uh, they're going to want to figure out why he did that. Why were you riding around in the open? Uh, did you want to get caught? Uh, what is very interesting is the fact that none of these devices uh, exploded. Uh, they're going to try to get into a psyche. What was your, no, what was your purpose? What did you actually uh, try to gain from this? So, yeah, he's going to be interviewed by obviously the ground investigators, but also very important, those uh, who could look it into a psyche. That's very, very important. How long does that process take? Well, it could take hours, uh, many, many hours. They're going to try to befriend him. They're going to, you know, uh, the one thing investigators will do is try to befriend the suspect, get him to talk, uh, get him to maybe talk about his past and a little bit of a history of uh, the environment that they lived in, et cetera. And then they begin to talk. And he may begin to turn over a lot of information with regard to who he was in contact with, which will lead them to others. But that's what they're going to do. It may take a few hours. It could take eight hours, nine hours. But I think uh, that it's going to be done pretty quickly. I, something tells me that this guy knew he was going to get caught and maybe at one point wanted to get caught. I thought it was interesting what Catherine Harridge was saying earlier when she was talking about the algorithms that are used at this point in time. And this is really, I mean, it goes back to that, that whole thing that you don't do anything without you know, people knowing where you are and what you're doing, like sort of organizing mm. where the packages were sent from based on the stamp and then how long it took for them to get to each place. And if they were mailed at similar times and kind of fanning out from there, 
um, on where things were bought, that you begin with the help of algorithms to triangulate back and forth until you find somebody who could have achieved all of the different markers and that Melissa, they can to, find. To, to your point, uh, don't be surprised if people start coming forward and say, you know, I saw him going to the post office the other day, or mm. I saw him buying this, or there was something on social media that I saw. I was in a chat room. So uh, most of the time you will see people come forward now and say, I saw something. I should have said something. Well, Steve, well just like with one of the packages, and, but first right? The thing one you, at De Niro's place, that yeah. the mailroom, uh, that the person who was working there, the doorman, mailroom crew realized that. Wait, didn't I see something a couple of days ago? Yep. And that package had been sitting. I'm sorry, Dave. No, the one of the first things you would do though is run looking for people who had rested prior, prior for making bomb threats. Yes. And this individual, based on our reporting so far, had been arrested at least one point for making a, a terroristic threat based on a bomb and so that's the, the speed with which again the speed with which this this suspect was identified and taken into custody is kind of astonishing because if you think back to like the anthrax lace letters that were sent back in 2001 it took years the fbi hounded an innocent man for years yeah. and eventually it was into about it was um it was in 2008 that the individual who was responsible um committed suicide so this is mm -hmm. this is a matter of days that they were mm -hmm. able to arrest this individual well with the bombs themselves and and we learned this morning out of all of them and this was before the 11th and 12th had been looked at as closely as well um, but at the crack of dawn nine of them had been confirmed to be explosive devices you know a lot of times what you'll have is a fake device or you'll have you talk about them not blowing up but they were clearly capable of something because we've learned from Catherine Herridge's reporting and others that they were unstable and they were dangerous and needed to be blown up and not transferred right away intact to Quantico. So you mentioned, uh, Steve, what was first. What is next in all of this? Because it doesn't, I mean, they've, they've taken their pictures, they're sticking stuff up under the van to take pictures, and we don't know how much of this is going to unfold in front of us, so it's, it, it's very valuable to, to get your perspective on what they're doing. Well, the next is going to be obviously the interview, and uh, he, if there's anybody else involved, he will lead them to... But I mean for this van that's oh, now Oh, for this moving. van, oh. They're, they're going to bring it in there, they're going to remove the tarp, and they will take more pictures inside. Uh, they're going to take pictures, as Dagan said, what's on that dashboard. They're going to take pictures up and down and Look all around. Look at the screen right now. They are, um, they are moving it, and uh, they've moved it away from that opening that they were going to take it in. So maybe they're taking it elsewhere, as you say, Steve. Uh, so, so the, and the photographs are important because they want to make sure that, especially when they uh, go to prosecution, that they could say or they could place a particular piece of evidence in that van at that time. Uh, and then the, the collection of evidence from the forensics teams is very important. And uh, they, it's all, it, it all might be right there what they need. They might find uh, fragments of different uh, bomb making devices in that van. Uh, so actually, they're gonna. It looks like they're gonna actually take it off oh, the the van, and they may just. They're watching this. Yep, yeah, they may just push it into the garage. Maybe they couldn't get that truck in the garage. Oh, maybe that was a problem. I mean, we don't know what this caused them to come back out and to take their yeah. pictures right away outside in the open daylight. Yeah. But they had tried initially, Steve. Your observation, I. I yeah. It's very strong. I get it. It may have been a height situation because yes. now they are lifting that van. Uh, off of that tow truck bed yeah. and perhaps as you say yeah. oh uh, and you can see right there there's another new image of the side of the van and during that period of time when the tarp came off and you can see if you look closely a lot of the stickers we're trying to this monitor it doesn't work we can see over here um, oh, so okay. that you we don't want to miss them rolling the van see what's on there yeah my guess is Harris um, you're right they, they, they couldn't fit wow. the uh, van with that uh, yeah the height because you, you yeah. never saw it like breach the doorway much there right we go. so yeah. um wow look at how much information now there is now we did have uh sbn our, our fox affiliate wsbn who was following along from the air uh and so we had a different vantage point of images because now that's back where the van was originally parked because i remember that pole is in those original pictures but uh as we look away from that you know, we got we got some some interesting points of view from the air and they have a zoom lens up there, too. It's fascinating. But if we go back right now to the live pictures, because we don't want to miss them backing this off of the tow truck bed to see where they're going to take it now, if they're actually going to push it into that garage. Uh, we'll wait for them to go back to the live pictures. And again, that is Miramar, Florida, 
where they are backing. So they are lifting that van up. This is complicated too, Steve, because I don't think you necessarily want to turn the engine on. Well, them. no, you, you don't. don't want and, to disturb and, any of the, the uh, evidence. Exactly. And, and the important element here now is preservation of evidence. Uh, they want to make sure that nothing on that van, especially the outer surfaces, they want to make sure that's protected. So they're being very, very careful. And my guess is they're going to uh, push that van into the garage and then close the garage door because the preservation of evidence is key, uh, not only to prosecution, but is key to further the investigation if they have to. It may lead them to some other suspects if there are some. Is it odd for him to be so overt with these stickers on the truck, or is this something that you have seen before, or the van rather? Uh, seen things before during my law enforcement career. Uh, these people are unstable. Uh, they're, they're really uh, unstable, believe me, yeah. Lisa. And, uh, but, but in this case, you know, it, it, it may lead to something, some part of the investigation, maybe not. But what's important is the preservation of all of that. Look, he may have written on some of those stickers that are in the window, and that may be very important. The, the, this I, van was so conspicuous. Okay, so around. I want to tell you what you're seeing on the side of your screen there as they're moving. They're going over there to the auto zone. There we go. Um, this is where the suspect was arrested earlier. It is in Plantation, Florida. And I guess it looks like we're looking through the window inside of the store and you can see there um, some FBI officials inside doing work wearing their jacket. But this is where they actually found the suspect and where they found this van. Go ahead. Steve. No, I was just going to oh, yeah. say that this van was so conspicuous and quite frankly stood out yeah. so prominently that people in South Florida around uh, the suspect, um, Cesar Sayoc, uh, lived in Aventura, which mm -hmm. is kind of southeast of Plantation where he was arrested. But the people in the in past days and weeks had taken photos of this van mm -hmm. and were posting them on social media earlier saying this van was so absurd and covered in all this propaganda Safe. that they had taken photos of yeah. it prior. So that's how conspicuous he was. And that's how he was clearly um, not trying to hide. Yes, yeah, Steve, what were you going to say what there? What do you think of that? Yeah. See something, say something. Mm -hmm. And Megan, that's great. And that's the point that uh, <clears throat> the law enforcement brings to people. Your gut feeling says there's something wrong. These people felt there was something wrong. They took pictures, they posted it. And look what we have. Yeah, you know, as we look at the different parts of this and community working together, law enforcement working together, uh, I, I go back to what Lisa was just asking. You're driving around in something that is a right. billboard. Right. So was the goal really to get caught? We don't know. You mentioned the criminal psychological investigators who will be interviewing him for hours. Uh, that will be a very intriguing scoop of information because, again, you couldn't even drive around at night much with, with something this... I don't know how you can see out. Oh, yeah. well, look, he could have been driving around saying, hey, guys, here I am, it's me. I mean, this is the type of people we're dealing with. <clears throat> so, yes, very conspicuous, but you know what? The fact of the matter is, is that all becomes part of evidence. Can I say that we don't yet know who that van is registered to? <clears throat> we're making the... Do we? We're making no, the assumption I said it was that... No, right. I said it was taken from the premises of the home that we knew where he lived, and we've been told that that was a van right. that the suspect owned. But no, we haven't had a chance to run a DMV or anything. We didn't have enough information, only his name in the last hour or so. Right. Uh, clearly, there's a lot of information on the outside of that van. And when it was parked, uh, if you go back to that picture where it has a pole in it, uh, earlier on when people were snapping it and putting it all over... Twitter um, from their TV sets, you could see even more information. So there probably is a way to find it through the DMV, I, I would imagine at this point. But it is the human intelligence that has made such a huge uh, impact uh, as we can see that auto zone in Plantation, Florida. Well, that goes back to what we call <clears throat> the original, <clears throat> how investigators originally did their investigations. A lot of footwork, a lot of human intelligence, as you say. <clears throat> Excuse me, a lot of interviews. Uh, you can have a lot of video footage. You can have a lot of forensic evidence, but there's nothing like a human being saying, hey, you know what? That person was in this store, and yes, they buy this. They, I'm sorry, they bought this. They bought that. They drove here in that van. Steve, can I, I ask saw you them a quick few question days. before we run out of time? So you have a van that looks like that, and let's say that, that it is his. How do you start an interview? Like, how does that change the way you approach someone if 
that's what they're driving around in while they're in theory trying to, you know, get away with this crime. Well, what I would do is say to the, to, to the suspect right off, look, we have you, uh, we, we have your van, we have everything that's in the van that's now becoming part of evidence. Why lie? Tell the truth. And believe it or not, they figure they're caught. Why not just tell the truth? That's what you do. You come right forward and that's the way you put it. And Steve, how much, obviously we live in a 24-hour news cycle. How much information will the public find out, do you think, in the next 24 hours or so? Well, you're going to find out information that will not compromise this investigation because it's ongoing. We don't know if there's anyone else involved, but regardless, excellent police work. Well, what information we do have is a very lengthy arrest record based on going back to at least 1991 for a variety of different crimes in South Florida. And there's also a report that there was a bankruptcy filing about six years ago. And it said, and the filing says that this individual lived with his mother. Mm. And people who have seen this van around Aventura, Florida, when the doors of the van would be open, they the presumption was that the individual was living in the van, at mm. least part part of the time. And, and there's a phrase that we uh, use in law enforcement that we don't know what we don't know. That's right. why you have to go after to find out what you need to know. Mm -hmm. mm. And to build a case. And when to build a case. What do, they build need, a case. what do they need to know right now? Well, they need to know right now immediately. I mean, they have him in enough evidence. Was there anyone else involved? Did anyone else have information? Who were you talking to on the telephone during the period of time that this was going on? That is absolutely important, and it may lead police to either more suspects or to a dead end, and he would be the only person involved in this. And I wouldn't be surprised if we learned in, that there were other people who tipped off the police. I mean, you talk about looking at what numbers were going out and coming in and out of his phone. We don't know that there weren't, at this point, other people who were calling in and saying, hey, the van, the person, or I know this guy. Right. Yes, you're right. That's why we'll get limited information from law enforcement, because right now it's an ongoing investigation, and the thing they do not want to do is compromise the investigation at this point. All right. You know, one of the questions, too, I would imagine when you talk about are there other people involved, are there any other devices? Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, because somebody, you don't want somebody else carrying out the, whatever the bent vision was. Well, that, that's right. And, and hopefully there are none. And uh, at this point, Amen. we'll find out. All right. We have live team Fox coverage and analysis coming right up. Stay with us.